Hello, I'm Llewellyn Falco. I'm the creator of the Open Source Project Approval Tests. Hi, I'm Lynn Langen, and I'm the creator of the Open Source Project Teaching Kids Programming. And we're here to talk to you today about our talk at OzCon, Harnessing the Good Intentions of Others for your Open Source Project. So we both have small projects, labor is love for both of us, but we've been very fortunate in being able to work and collaborate with a lot of people over the last two years. How many people have you worked with on your project? Probably 50 or even 100 people worldwide have um, made significant contributions to teaching kids programming. And for approval tests, I've been fortunate enough to pair with about 30 to 50 people over the last few years. And so first, I wanted you to tell a story about when you reached out to the community to have them help you. Yeah, what we wanted to do in this video is give you a little sample of what our talk would be. And so um, our idea is to share what we've learned about harnessing good intentions, whether something we needed or something somebody contacted us with, and what we did, and so you can apply that to your project. So one example for me is I was working with a delegation of Korean teachers, and our coursework is not in Korean. The IDE was. And so I just put on Twitter, um, and I said, hey, any programmers out there from Korea, can you help us translate this beginning software lesson? And, uh, you know, I was successful. It took five minutes, and I got a guy to translate. So it's cool. So you're proactively asking for help, and you've made a very short amount of tasks to do. Short and specific, yeah. Right. We're, you know, at our talk, we're going to try and distill some of the things we've learned over time, and short and specific is one of those lessons. So another thing we want to talk about, just to give you a preview, is something where instead of um, us reaching out, somebody reached out to us, and that was something where you got an email from a guy in Finland. How'd that yeah, go? so I got this email from PAC in Finland basically complaining that my open source project was not very robust and a lot of stuff was hard-coded, absolutely accurate. And so I reply back and say, hey, I'd like to look into this more. Would you be willing to spend an hour on Skype with me? And so we connected. And the first thing I got was a complete shock to me was that I had made all these assumptions from sort of my point of view and, and from an American point of view and that tests that I thought were passing and that passed on my computer didn't when we were on different time zones different standards for how you did commas and periods and, and all these things. So we spent about the first half an hour sort of challenging those assumptions and getting those tests to actually pass. And then we spent another 40 minutes or so, I think the entire call was about an hour and a half, going into some of the other assumptions I had made where I would hard-coded stuff and pulled it out to make it more robust. So that was one of the examples where someone came to me saying, hey, I don't like this, I want it to be mm -hmm. fixed. And by working with them, I was able to do so much more than if we had just emailed back and forth. So when we were thinking about what would be good for us to share with people attending OzCon, we thought, hey, it might be helpful for us to talk about how we've had success collaborating with people all over the world and ending up with either help on technical training or committable code into our open source projects. So we hope that you find this helpful, and we're looking forward to talking with you at OzCon.